Michelle Burmaster. I'm the owner of Surf City Fit Club in Huntington Beach, California, and the founder of Disruptor Diet. When I was nine, I wanted to be a Power Ranger. I immediately started bugging my mom to sign me up for karate classes. I thought karate was the most fascinating thing I've ever seen in my life. I wanted to do it. I had dreams about fighting bad guys. I don't know what it was about it, but I wanted to be a part of it. Before I was even halfway to black belt, I was learning how to sell people on memberships, I was cleaning the toilets, I was scrubbing the mats, and all in an effort to continue learning the martial arts and ultimately become an instructor. By the time I was 22, I opened my own martial arts school. I was a little overweight at the time because I, I, I got in a car wreck when I was 19 and I had post-concussion syndrome and I gained 50 pounds. Uh, one day I was driving down the freeway at about 80 miles an hour and a ladder fell off a truck in front of me. So I took the wheel and I thought I was avoiding you know, the ladder and instead I flipped my car um, two and a half rotations and I ended up in oncoming traffic upside down. With the head trauma came a change in serotonin levels in my brain and I fell into kind of a pretty deep depression pretty quickly. Uh, I remember very distinctly reflecting and saying, you know, out loud and to others, like, I just feel, I feel different, I feel changed. It was the first time in my life I'd ever been walking around with a lot of weight, and I, I didn't really know that I was overweight because it happened so fast. I was in denial for a long time. Uh, people tried to call it to my attention, like, hey, you know, do you know you're putting on weight? And, like, no, I have, I have body dysmorphia and I have no idea what I really look like. I think most females can say that in the culture we're brought up and we're all so critical on ourselves that even when your body image does take a turn for you know the less than favorable you have a hard time admitting that too so we can't admit to ourselves that we look good we can't admit to ourselves that we're starting to look a little rough because we just have no concept of what we actually look like it came to a point in my life where i had no other excuses everyone can always find an excuse you know, I have a work schedule, I have kids, I have this, I have that. I didn't have a job, I was looking for a job. And I would wake up every morning and I didn't, there was nothing to do. So it was like, you know, you might as well do it now and see if, at least try something. Anything that you find when you Google how to lose weight is a product. So I did some heavy research for about two or three weeks and I educated myself on what a calorie deficit is and I implemented it and I ended up losing um, over 70 pounds in nine months. Like, this is really basic information. You eat less calories than you burn and if you are working out and you're making good food choices consistently, you will lose weight over time. I dove so hard head first into it and became so addicted to the constant results that I became a little extreme about the whole thing. There was a time towards the end of my weight loss where I felt like I had about 10 more pounds to lose. And I was addicted to the feeling of getting on the scale and that number being lower every time. And I had no idea, realistically, what a good goal weight for me would be. It got to a point where I was taking on eating disorder type habits, orthorexia, where I just wouldn't eat certain types of foods. And if I did, I would have days and days of guilt. And uh, it took me a really long time to shake that. Actually, it took me up to about last year to really try to get past that point in my life where I just kind of let it go. At that time in my life, looking back at photos, I think I was too skinny there. And I'm kind of upset that nobody ever told me that I was too skinny because now they all say you were too skinny. Psychological and emotional health is just as important as physical health. And there's no benefit to losing a bunch of weight only to be a really crazy person about it the whole time because then you might get to the way you should look and that you would have agreed that you should look before you started the process, but you're so damaged emotionally and psychologically that it doesn't do anybody any good. It's okay to have a cupcake every once in a while because it keeps you sane. And I think that that's more important than being ripped any day because who, ca who cares if you're ripped? I know people that are stronger than me that have 100 pounds on me and they're not by any means ripped and I admire them so much because they're strong and they never quit and they just kill it. And it's like, let's stop worrying about what we look like and start worrying about what we can do. You can, you can be as physically healthy as you'd like, but if you're not mentally healthy, you'll be physically unhealthy on the other end of the spectrum because you'll be pushing yourself beyond what's even necessary. I think that with everything I've gone through from the weight gain to the weight loss and all the good and the bad in between, 
has really helped me take a super well-rounded and balanced approach to fitness and weight loss and transformations for people.